What's up everybody? Just going through some inventory. We're getting some more pricing done. Looking at our excess, our non-competitive. So excess are products that we have more than 60 days of stock of. And then non-competitive are products that were at our floor price. And we're not buy box competitive. So they're non-competitive because we can't go lower because of our floor price. So I'm just, this is something I do, I would say three to four days a week. It's essentially making pricing decisions to continue the cash turn in our business. You know, something I encourage everybody to do is check your inventory turns on inventory planning because your turn should be close to 12. Between 10 and 12 is the optimal amount. That means you're turning your inventory every 30 to 40 days. You know, if your inventory turns are very low, I've consulted with companies who have inventory turns of you know four or five that means you're really only selling through your inventory every 90 days that doesn't allow for a large cash influx back into your business so you can continue to reinvest that because you got to think about it like this if you have that 90 day funds tied up let's just say it's a thousand dollars tied up for 90 days you have to think if you were able to flip that three times in those 90 days, would you be able to make more profit off of those three flips opposed to holding the inventory for 90 days and selling it once or three times? What works best for you? And you gotta run the numbers. It's the only way to figure that out. So that's what I'm doing now. Dropping some prices. Like this product we're listed at 1379. That's our floor price. And the price on Amazon is $12.37, selling 2,000 items a month. So what I'm gonna do is go down to $12.19, set my floor price, which for us is a 2.58% margin, 31 cents profit on this item. But when I look at it, it makes logical sense. It's been in stock for 35 days. At the current sales rate, we'll have about four months of inventory that's too long for us that's just too long four months of inventory so i'll take the 31 cents out of it and reinvest the cash flow back into other profitable products also if you got any questions i'm more than happy to help you know if you're struggling with something in your business be happy to elaborate something i'm seeing a lot of is buy box suppression so that's when you jump on the listing and i'll show you what it looks like real quick so it will look like this that is buy box suppression right that means that the listing is suppressed so there's no buy box shown here usually right here on the right side of the listing it will say the price that it's listed at but this buy box is suppressed how do you manage products that other sellers kill the price and leave you without profit so i actually just recorded a full video about this yesterday it'll be posted on youtube in a couple days but what we do is we analyze it the same way we do product research right so we're looking at the competitive sellers, how much inventory they have in stock and how close they are to the buy box price because that, that's who you're gonna be competing with. So the importance of knowing their inventory levels is because you can gauge how long they'll be dominating at that price, right? If they have, let's say 500 ASINs or units and the listing's only selling 100, right? Assuming they're not getting 100% of the buy box, let's just say they're selling 70 units a month. So you do 500 divided by 70, they have seven over seven months of inventory based on the sales data. So am I willing to wait seven months to get the buy box, right? Or am I just willing to drop my price, lose a dollar or two, get the cash back and use that cash to flip five or six times in the next seven months to make way more money than I would get holding off the listing, selling it for seven months. And also you don't know what the landscape of the listing is gonna look like in seven months. It could be completely changed. We're also looking at the keep a chart. So there's a few things we're analyzing when we're making those decisions. At what point do you put that item in a spreadsheet as a no good buy? Uh, it doesn't go on a spreadsheet as a no good buy because it was a no good buy, right? But that doesn't mean it won't be profitable next month or next year or next quarter. And it doesn't mean it wasn't profitable last month or last year or last quarter. So like we don't, we don't organize our SKUs as like good, bad, buy, bad, bad buy. It's just at the end of the quarter, end of the year, we analyze and end of the month, we analyze and even end of the week we started doing, we analyze our profits, gross profits, net profits, and our profits as a distributor, right? Viewpoint opposed to as a whole, because you wanna analyze your vendor separately. So you know like, okay, vendor A is bringing me on average 16% margins, which equates to a $3.20 profit, right? distributor or vendor B is giving me 25% margins 
at a, whatever that is, $5 profit, you know? So it really varies on the goals. How are we packaging glass drinks? Something that's been taking a long time to package in our business. So we prefer uh, bubble bags. So let's just say we're selling three drinks, right? We will take two of the drinks. Let's say there's three in a row, right? We'll do this. We'll do a little, a little diagram here. Let me see. All right, so we got one bottle. We got two bottles. And then we got three bottles, right? Assuming these are all bottles of glass. I would, I would bubble bag this one and I would bubble bag this one, and then I would put all three in a bubble bag, right? So now you're eliminate having to bubble bag this one because all of these are going to be bubble bagged, right? So the first one's bubble bag, the second one's bubble bag, the one in the middle doesn't need to be bubble bag because it's not touching any glass, and then the, the entire three pack would be put in a bubble bag. Does that make sense? Uh, the number one software we use for product research is called SourceCorrect. Um, it's not on the market yet. It's our own software that we designed. We're just onboarded actually the first three users from our inner circle uh, about two weeks ago. So they're getting onboarded. And then every week or so, we're gonna be onboarding three new members from the inner circle. So by the time that's done, there'll be 25 businesses using our software and we'll be able to work out all the kinks at scale and then we'll be able to release it to the public. So SourceCorrect is the, the software name, um, but but if obviously it's not on the market yet, so we, you can use stuff like Scan Unlimited. Uh, do I prefer to approach brands or distributors? I definitely prefer to approach distributors. It's just more seamless. The transaction is easier. Um, it's very simple basis of the relationship. I have money to spend, you have products to sell, let's make an exchange, right? With brands, it's more of a one-on-one -on -one personalized relationship depending on what the brand wants out of the relationship. Is it optimized listings? Is it ad spend? Is it brand registry? Um, are they trying to move more volume, increase their profits, increase their presence on the marketplace? Or are they really just selling on Amazon because they went to Walmart and Walmart said, hey, we can't carry your product because you don't have any Amazon sales. So it's definitely easier to build those relationships with distros. Let's see. You know what I'm thinking of doing? I'm not thinking about it, it's gonna happen. I just like to hear your opinion on it. But probably in the next three to four weeks, we're gonna do a free, it will be a live Amazon training, right? So very similar to what our, our Monday night course calls look like, where it's a live Q&A and we're providing hella value. Right, so in the next three to four weeks, we're gonna be providing that, but it'll be absolutely free to join and attend. And you can just kind of see what happens in these live calls that we have every week. Because literally, for the past two years, every Monday night, I've been spending two hours with anywhere from 40 to 60 Amazon sellers, teaching them how to grow their business. It's my favorite night of the week. Um, and it's, it's pretty special, and I want you to experience it. Because if you don't experience it, then you don't know what you're missing out on. So just, just hit me a little fire emoji in the comments if that's something that you would uh, consider doing. How do you react when Amazon jumps in on one of your listings? How do I react? I don't think I do react, but it's the same way that I discussed you know, five minutes ago at the beginning of the call. Uh, we analyze the same way we would do product research. So we're looking at the competitive sellers to keep a chart. If, it, if it's seasonal product, the price that we need to be listed at in order to win the buy box or match the price with Amazon and get some of those sales. How much inventory do they have? How much buy box allocation are they getting? You check the buy box statistics in, in Keepa and that will really give you a rundown of what you can expect. Also check the past. when they Are they always on the listing? Do they jump in and out? We probably make four or five million dollars a year in sales revenue on listings that Amazon sells on. How do you find wholesalers? Google's a great place. Start with keyword research, you know? Grocery distributors, New Jersey. Uh, beauty distributors, New Jersey. Toy distributors, New Jersey. If you live in Texas, start there. Always start in your immediate area and then branch out, right? So for me, I'm in New Jersey. I'd start in New Jersey and then I'd branch out to the Northeast and then I'd do East Coast and then I'd do nationwide. Reason why is because you don't want to go open five accounts from Washington State if you live in New Jersey because that shit's all the way across the country and shipping's expensive. So you don't want to be paying for shipping across the country. If you can find a distributor closer to you, you can leverage the relationship and save on shipping. Um, some other things we do is just driving around, looking on on the road. You know, I'm sure you're, I'm sure you commute to wherever you do in your life very frequently. Keep your eyes open on the road. You probably drove by. 
10 or 15 trucks in the past 30 days that are potential great distributors and you didn't even realize it. How to hire your first VA for Amazon account. So I, I really like onlinejobs.ph. The reason why is because it's not like a one-time service you're getting, right? You're looking for a full-time employee. So on onlinejobs.ph, these uh, people who are offering their services there, they're looking for full-time employment. They're not looking for one-off gigs like they offer on Fiverr or Upwork, right? Fiverr or Upwork's like a one-off gig where it's like, hey, here's a service fee, $300, and this is the task you're doing, or this is the job that I expect to get done. And when it's done, the relationship is over, right? Onlinejobs.ph, you're building more of a employee base where you're leveraging their experience and growing with them and they are growing with you. It's a more even exchange. And then you can incentivize them and it's much easier. Uh, source Correct will probably be around $500 a month. So it's gonna be the, the priciest product research tool on the market because it will be the best. What to do with Amazon's shipment problem? I purchased new Zebra printers and check all my barcodes over and over. It seems to continue, especially AVP1 shipments. Yeah, so listen, if, you're, if, you, if you checked your shipments and you're scanning these barcodes before they leave, sometimes we do a little test, right? We'll, we'll pull a couple ASINs aside and scan them to make sure they're scanning. Um, if it's still happening, you just gotta keep doing what you're doing. If you've checked the barcodes over and over and there's nothing, there's no issue, and when you're scanning them, it's probably an issue on Amazon's end. How do we price our products? So we use a repricer. 2040, I'm actually doing it right now. So let me go 1999, buy box strategy. Uh, so we use a repricer for our products. That's how we reprice them. Um, so you put your cost of goods in and then you set a floor price for us The floor price is 10% gross margin and then we set a ceiling price, right? So the floor is what the lowest price you will list your product at right either based on a, a profit margin percentage or an ROI percentage We like to use profit margin because when you analyze a business from any standpoint You're looking at profits, right? What money came in whether you're selling it doing your taxes um or just learning about your company. You're looking at cash in. You know, you wanna know how profitable your business is. So we set that floor price and then we set a ceiling price, usually around 25, 30% over, well not over anything, but usually 25 to 30% margin would be our, our ceiling price. Just because we've analyzed tens of thousands of SKUs and that's the average ceiling price that we populate based on our research for the Keepa chart. Uh, so you set the ceiling, you set the floor, and you just let the repricer work its magic in between. It's very simple. You know, like here's a product we've had in stock for 18 days. Weren't capitalizing on the grocery discount, so we weren't getting any sales. Now at the current listed price, we'll make $2.24, which is great. I'm, I'm excited about that. And we'll sell out our 146 units in the next 30 days. So what do we got? 146 times 226. This product will bring us $329 in gross profits this month. Now let's say you got 100 of those. You're talking about $33,000 in gross profit a month. At scale, it makes sense. So here's an example. This product I just listed at $19.99. In $19.99, I'm losing $3.29. But I don't care because I literally, it's been in stock for 60 days. I've had 57 sales and an average profit of $2 each. I have 66 items left, right? So this product is essentially a wash. It'll be a break even for us. But what it's doing is it's building our trust with Amazon. It's getting a seller feedback and the wash products make up such a small percent. I'm talking less than two or 3% of our products that at that point it doesn't even matter. It's just a matter of getting the cash flow back because right now this listing is ranked at 148,000. So really the only way to sell it is to drop the price because the rank's going up and the price is going down. Very common, I call it the V or the X split pattern. The, the way the Keepa chart will look is the, the rank is going up, meaning the BSR is increasing, and the price is going down. If you're getting any value out of this call, literally eSellers RI, our training course, teaches you all of this in thorough detail with tutorials and step-by-step -step videos explaining in detail way more thoroughly what I'm talking about right now, right? So if some of this maybe isn't, isn't jiving, it's because it's just one-off questions and I'm just being very um, curt with the responses because it's an Instagram live, but if you want like thorough in-depth training on how to optimize your business, eSellers or I is the move. And at $3,000, it's literally a fucking steal. It's, I don't know how long it's gonna stay at 3K, but 
not much longer because literally you're changing people's lives and I love doing it. All right, here's a great example. This is a great product. I'm gonna, I'm gonna run some game for y'all right now. Past 60 days of this product, we sold 96 units. Hope you got your pens out and taking notes on this. So 60 days, 96 units sold. $295 in gross profit. I have nine units left, and right now, in order to sell them, the last nine units, I have to lose $1.94, right, to be competitive. I've already had the product in stock for 60 days. These last nine, nine units have been sold in over a week. So what I'm gonna do is on those nine units, drop the price to lose $1.94. So you're looking at nine times $1.94. So in these next nine sales, I will essentially lose $17.46, but I already made $295. So $295 minus $17.46, this product still made me $277. So like, you, you gotta look at the big picture here. Just because I'm losing $2 on the last nine units didn't doesn't mean I didn't make a lot of money on the first 96 that I sold. Uh, so we're gonna drop the price, lose $1.96 on those, and the product will still make us $277. So I'm ready to rock on that. Maz Kamani, send me a DM, I'll send you a link. It's a short application. We just wanna gauge how big your business is. There are some minimum requirements to join the inner circle. Um, so for anybody who doesn't know what the inner circle is, so we got eSellers RI, which is like our foundation program, right? So most people, they find us on Instagram, find us on YouTube, and then they start watching our content. They, they begin to trust us, because we're good guys. You know, we're trustworthy, we're uh, accountable, and we say what we're going to do. You know, that's important to me. So then they reach out and they join eSellers RI, right? And eSellers RI, you get 16 weeks of live coaching calls, you get access to the training, you get access to the private Facebook community. So they join eSellers RI and their business begins to really grow, right? And then they're crushing, you know, high six figures, seven figures a year. And they're like, you know what? I need more access to Eric and Sebastian. So they join our inner circle. There's three tiers to our inner circle. There's Brain Trust, M Club, and High Society. Three different pricing structures and three different access points to each. So it's like if you're operating a large business, it's an annual membership for a full 12 months where we have in-person events. We fly to your warehouse or your place of business and help you optimize it. You get one-on-one -on -one time with me and Sebastian. You get your own personalized inner circle calls every month. Uh, where we teach you new things about growing your business. We just had one last night. Last night, it was so fucking amazing. It was probably one of the most amazing Amazon calls I've ever been on. And I've been doing this shit for four years taking Amazon calls. So that says a lot about the process, you know? eSellers RI is a course and a coaching course. So you get three access points to us. You get the training, which is the course, right? The fundamentals, step by step, how to find good distributors, how to negotiate pricing, how to leverage the relationships. And then we teach you how to do the product research, what softwares to use, where to find them. We give you discounts for them and we train you on those softwares, teach you how to navigate Seller Central, teach you how to create wholesale bundles and listings, optimize ad campaigns, literally optimize your production station. So wherever you are, whether you're operating in your living room or your kitchen or a storage unit or a warehouse, House, we teach you how to set it up so you're more efficient in your process. You also get lifetime access to a private Facebook community which has over 600 wholesale businesses in it. It's a no-brainer. And then you get 16 weeks of live coaching with me and Sebastian every Monday night for two fucking hours. I'm giving this shit away. And you can just send me a DM and we can get you set up if you're ready to rock. So warehouse is necessary for wholesale. It's not necessary, but in order to scale to massive numbers, it will be a requirement in the near future. So there's a lot of people in our community. Uh, Brian off the top of my head, he, he's a local New Jersey guy. He's a full-time corrections officer. He's got two little kids at home and he doesn't want to have a warehouse. He doesn't have the time for it. So, you know, he crushes close to six figures a month just leveraging prep centers and doing some prep himself. So it is not a requirement, but it will help you grow your business um, in the long term, in the future. So we didn't have a warehouse till about 12 months in, we got a warehouse. Um, and it really helped us get to the next level that we needed to get to.
the best type of client is the person who's like not thinking about the price, right? There's a, we were talking about this on our inner circle call and then I'll wrap it up, right? But when you spend money on stuff, don't think about it as dollar, right? It's an exchange of energy. The same reason why I haven't done my laundry in three years, because I don't want to spend the time doing the laundry. My hour and a half of laundry is worth way more than the $30 I pay the lady to do my laundry for me and fold it, right? The next step, all she needs to do, I want her to come to my house and put it away for me. You know, because that's like the goal. I don't want to have to do any of that shit because my time is way more valuable, right? So an exchange of energy, anything you're paying for is exchange for energy. When you go out to eat, you don't have to cook the food. You don't have to prepare for the food. You don't have to buy for the food. You are paying for the exchange of energy, not using your own, using somebody else's. And the service fee is what the bill is. Same thing goes with Amazon. Yeah, you can absolutely spend the next 12 months figuring this shit out for yourself. It's going to be painful. It's going to take a lot of time. You're going to make a lot of mistakes exchange your money for my energy so you don't have to do it yourself use my experience to build your Amazon business is India good for wholesale yeah India is good for wholesale but we actually work there's some some members in the sellers our community actually I won't join about five days ago he's in India he sells in India and Amazon uh, US and he does uh, wholesale how much capital would you recommend before getting into eSellers or I have some high credit card limits but not too much capital and cash. Credit card limits is straight. I recommend uh, other than the $3,000 investment in the training, you should have another three to $5,000 in inventory. That will allow you to place two or three wholesale orders with two or three different vendors so you can really capitalize on your opportunity um, as far as money goes. Right, so the recommended amount would be between what is that five? So that's six and eight thousand dollars is the recommended amount. You know, and if you got credit cards, like that's what we built our whole business on was credit cards. All right, my friends, I got a meeting. I got to break out of here. If I didn't answer your question, join me on the next live. Would love to get to know you a little better and provide as much value as possible. That's the name of the game over here. For all of you who don't know me, my name's Eric Castellano, and I want to help you build a profitable business. Have a beautiful day. Stay lit.